Hello, Mark. Hello, Robert. Hello, How Mark. Are you? Yeah, not too bad. Thank you. Keeping okay. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for getting back to me. You had a good That's meeting fine. on Zoom. Yeah, we had a nice meeting. Um, our, our meetings are every Sunday for follow this format. We have a, a talk to begin with, half an hour. It's uh, predominantly for members of the public. Yes. Um, and then we follow it with a about a 20 paragraph, very similar to the book that you've been looking at. Yes. Um, 20 paragraph. Um, it's called The Watchtower. You've probably seen that on the website. And yes. The form is a, a study edition. So there's 20 paragraphs, about 20 questions, all looking at uh, ways of living and reminders for you know, how to behave and how to act. And certainly there's different subjects about yes. not giving up, etc., etc. It goes on and on and on. So that's the format for a Sunday. Uh, right. We're just not able to meet in our halls at the moment so we're on on zoom around the world which presents certain challenges yes. but it's nice to be able to see each other that's for yes. sure well i will be able to speak on zoom in about a month's time i've okay. changed the contract for my phone yesterday right and yeah. it takes a month to work through but i'm going okay. to have unlimited data on the phone at the moment i've got very little data a friend has put zoom on this phone but i think okay. you know i've got such little data it will all be used up you see yeah, sure. You don't have Wi-Fi, I take it. Sorry, what do you mean? Do you have wi wi uh, Wi-Fi internet at home? Oh, no, 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 I don't. I just have this 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 phone. But I'm going on to yeah. an unlimited data on the yeah. 22nd of January. I've decided to pay a right. little bit more so I'll be able to do Zoom. So maybe Thank we could you. speak on Zoom in the future. But you'll need to explain very yeah. slowly and very simply to me how to use it because I don't yeah. have a clue. Okay. Okay, that's understandable. Are you are you local to that of interest? No, Port Slade is is near Brighton, isn't it, or Hove? Yes. 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 No, I'm I'm along the coast. I'm in Devon. Oh right. Okay, so quite yes. a way away. Yes. Yes. But your number had a um, mobile phone number on it because if you go to find a congregation on JW.org, it is yeah. difficult to. If you ring a landline, often people don't get back yeah. to you, Mark. Yeah, understandable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the way the way that our congregations work again, I, I apologise if I'm insulting your intelligence. Is is we have uh, we don't have a, a sort of a priest as 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 such. Um, in fact, we don't have one at all. I don't know why I said as such. We have a a group of uh, appointed men called elders. Um, I am one of those. Just just so you yes. know who you're talking to, and we kind of. Uh, overseer or oversee or shepherd the congregation together as a body. Um, yes. The way our congregations are established, we we try to follow as closely the first century Christian congregation as we possibly can. So you'll find in the Bible terms such as appointing elders and ministerial servants, uh, which of which we have um, a number of those that meet certain biblical qualifications, which are all uh, outlined in. Timothy yes. and Titus, etc. Um, so there's eight of us in Portslade. In fact, you've, I'm surprised. I mean, there's. It's interesting. I've got quite a few friends down in, in Devon. Um, so if at some point you wanted to visit when we when we finally decide we're able to go back to our Kingdom Hall, mm -hmm. there's plenty of options down there. Um, um, I don't just, have a car, so, you know. so no, I don't have. Right. I don't have transport. I'm a very poor guy. Um, you said ministerial servants are in the Bible. Mm. I know the Bible mentions deacons and elders. What does it mm. mention, I, ministerial I mean, I, servants? Yeah, let me just pull up my Bible. Are you actively uh, associated with a, a church or a congregation at the moment? No, I, I, I gave up for good in 2010 in total disgust. Right. I, was in, oh, okay. I tried a few Baptist and Pentecostal churches... I tried right. four of them for six months. I tried a reformed church for a week. I came to the conclusion I was not going to learn anything in any of them. And I, I didn't think that any of them were really very close to the Bible. Right. It yeah, seems to be more about status within a group and yeah. the family who run the, the business, because I think a lot of it's a business, getting all the money. Mm. 
I don't think it's about God at all. That's not to say I'm saying that every single person going to every single church is lost or a hypocrite, because I, I certainly no. believe there are far better Christians than me, more knowledgeable of the Bible and better Christians than me who go to all the denominations, yeah. even even pretty corrupt ones like the Catholics or liberal ones like right. the Anglicans. Yeah. Um, the trouble is, I don't think there's many genuine Christians in organised religion. I think most of it's hypocrisy. Yeah, well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't disagree with you. I mean, we're all extremely imperfect as a as a human race, trying to do our best. And we, you know, I I meet a lot of people that aren't Jehovah's Witnesses that are lovely, very charitable, um, don't have a religious or biblical or God fearing bone in their bodies by admission, but they're still very nice people. But you're right. Sadly, in a lot of religions, um, there seems to be hypocrisy which is a sad thing, really, because we've got far away from where people are supposed to be, really. It, it, it's not that there is hypocrisy. It's that when you find outright total hypocrisy, where the oh. preacher is covering for his son or daughter who've done something totally oh. different to the church oh. beliefs and totally different to oh. his own preaching, then oh. the preacher boy will turn around and defend his family. To, he'll defend oh. his family to the death, even though... Oh. They are hypocrites who are doing the very opposite of what um, the church standards are and what his preaching is. At the end of the day, uh, it's about, uh, for some people, it's about being um, leaders in a group. It gives them a sense of authority. I, I remember I heard a story about a man who worked in a Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant with teenagers. He was yeah. in his 40s. He wasn't a manager. He was a member of the crew. He wore a demeaning Kentucky Fried Chicken uniform. This is in America, not in Britain. Uh, he had to wear a Kentucky uh, Fried Chicken uniform, a demeaning hat. He was in his 40s and he had a low paid demeaning job. But in the evening, when he went to his religion, he was an elder. Uh, and he's never going to give up his religion to the day he dies because it gives him status within a group. Right. Right. Because that's what he wants. He doesn't care what uh, the Bible says. He doesn't care if his religion is faithful to the Bible or not. He has an elevated position. He's an elder. So when he goes to the um, religious building, he's notoriously harsh and strict because he loves throwing his weight around because he has to do a low paid job in a Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant. And there are other people I've met, um, particularly in the Pentecostal churches and the charismatic churches, people who are unbelievably biblically illiterate to a degree that's astounding astounding and they're pastors and they don't know the the, they they can't sit down with me and discuss the bible they don't have the ability to dialogue because they've been trained to preach in monologue and dialogue is something that's new to them and frightening because they don't they're not used to people answering them back and say well what about this or what about that and there are it's not so much in this country but again in america and in nigeria you know um there are people who are biblically illiterate. You see them on Christian TV. Uh, and they're flying around the world on a private jet. They've got a Rolls Royce yeah. and a Ferrari and a Lamborghini. <laughs> and they've got a second house and a private jet. I mean, Benny Hinn is yeah. one. Yeah. Um, a fake, like, okay. uh, he's got a fake, a fake doctorate degree that he bought, I think, from Zoe, right. Zoe College. Most of them have got yeah. fake doctorate degrees. They're not real doctors yeah. of divinity. They buy, right. they buy it off the Internet. And, and oh, okay. but but um, um I, I don't want to get sidetracked because um could, could you show me where the Bible says ministerial servant? Then we need to read chapter yeah. thirty three because I must insist if we talk we talk about one agreed topic. Um, if sure. we go from topic to topic, then I think we're wasting our time. But you well, just show me ministerial servant. You, I, yeah, I can give you a, a scriptural reference. Um, First Timothy three verse eight. But what you'll find there, uh, you need is to read probably, it probably. If you've got, are you using the King James Version? Do you have a King James Bible? First Timothy 3, verse 8. You need to read it. Um, this first, is the new first King James. Timothy 3, verse 8. I'm going to read you the King James first, because you'll go, yes, that's exactly what I said. It says deacons. It says, likewise, must the deacons, which you said, be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy. So it's talking about their characteristics. We're looking at the word deacon. Now, If we, with our Bible, we use the New World Translation. Um, The Byington version talks about deacons. American Standard version talks about deacons. But actually, the Greek word there comes from the word 
Diakonos. Um, I'm looking at it. It's Diakonos. It's 1,249 in Strong's Concordance. I'm looking at a, yes. uh, an interlinear tied to the King James. So it yes. says Diakonos, Excellent. deacon. It does not say Di- ministerial servant. Well, Diakonos literally means servant. Yes, I That's know that. That's why we use that. I, I, I know that, yes. But it says Diakonos, so, deacon. It does not yes. say ministerial servant. No, we... we so that's in in an official, so it literally means servant, is used there in an official sense referring to an appointed. So ministry, ministerial, you know, it's linked to, um, well, if you've got a Webster, I think it's Webster's Dictionary, talks about characteristics of a minister or ministry. So that's why we have this term ministerial, ministry servant, because we go back to the original translation. Which There's says deacon. Other scriptures. Which says deacon. Deacon well, meaning one, one, the, one, one who serves. Okay, um, do you want to go to chapter 33? Sure. Let me just jump. Thank you, to Mark. That. So, section two. Now, do you want me to read chapter 33? This is, um, it's section three. Do you want me to read this? This is what if I texted you, you have, about yesterday, I, yeah, or, or do you want to read it? Um, what would you prefer? I mean, if you okay. read it, I've got it in front of me. Okay, if you read it. Sure. So what will the kingdom, sorry, what the kingdom will accomplish, yeah? Yes. Do you want me to just specifically talk about paragraph three you mentioned, or do you want to read the chapter in its entirety? No, no, let's just read um, chapter three, paragraph three. What will okay. God's kingdom what accomplish after God's the wicked are destroyed? Yes. I, I okay. must insist no paraphrases. Could we agree oh, to I that rule? If we're no, going to absolutely. quote I'll the Bible, the printed page. we actually read the Bible rather than say, well, the Bible says blah, blah, blah. Because if you paraphrase, you know, you can leave out bits and pieces and the Bible can mean couldn't anything you want more. it to mean. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> okay. Yep, yeah, couldn't agree more. Yeah. So, after the wicked are destroyed, Jesus will rule as king for 1,000 years. During that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. By the end of that period, the earth will be turned into a beautiful paradise filled with happy people who benefit from obeying Jehovah's laws. Jesus will then hand the rulership back to his father, Jehovah. As never before, Jehovah's name will be sanctified. It will have been proved that Jehovah is a good ruler who cares about his subjects. Jehovah will then destroy Satan, the demons, and any others who choose to rebel against his rulership. The perfect conditions brought about by God's kingdom will last forever. Thank you. That's what the paragraph says. Thank you. Um, The first thing that struck me was line two. During that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers, this is during the millennium, the thousand years, will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Now, mm. I've read somewhere in your literature that these co-rulers, Mark, have I got this uh-huh. right or am I wrong? When they're resurrected, they're resurrected not as human beings, but as non-human spirit creatures. Correct. So, that is our understanding. So Fred Franz and Judge Rutherford and people like that. You've done your research, haven't you? Pardon? Yes. The, You've done your research. It's good. Nice yes, hear. of course I have. Otherwise, I'm wasting my time. Absolutely. Um, it's a bit of a shock that you're saying that these 144,000 anointed are going to be resurrected uh-huh. not as human but as spirit creatures. I find that very difficult to accept. Okay. Why is that? Pardon? Why, can I ask why? Or well, was that a statement? Awesome. Do you, well, you because... want to elaborate further? When, whenever the Bible talks about the resurrection, it's talking about the resurrection of the body. Body is soma in Greek. Um, for instance, Jesus himself resurrected as as a man. First um, Timothy two five states that Christ resurrected as a man. If I read from verse four, um, I was corrected by a very clever lady once um, because the verbs aren't actually in. Um, Verse five. Which was the chapter, Robert? First Timothy. First oh, Timothy, Timothy chapter two, verse five. But I'll read from verse four. Mm-hmm. The verbs come from verse four, and the verbs are present present tense. The tense changes in verse six, but the context for verse four and five is present tense. And Paul's writing in the late fifties. 
about 30 years after the resurrection. So Paul writes uh -huh. in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4, who desires all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is uh -huh. one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, that's the word anthropos in Greek, Christ Jesus. So 30 years post-resurrection, in the present tense, Paul is referring to Christ present tense as a man. Okay, see what you're saying. So I would see that as the example that Christ resurrected as a man. Um, if other human beings are going to be resurrected as non-human spirit creatures, not as men, different to Jesus Christ, then, um, you know, there should be good evidence for that in the Bible. Why, do you, why are you saying that that's present tense, as if Paul's writing, as if... Well, I'm not giving you that indication. Well, I'm not a Greek scholar, uh, but I have checked out people who are a lot cleverer than I am, and the verbs are present tense. Okay, oh. it, it doesn't say who used to desire or who did desire all men to be saved. That would be a past tense. It doesn't say uh -huh. who will desire all men to be saved, as if that's a future tense. It's written. Verse four is written in the present tense, and the tense is remain the same until verse 5 it only changes until verse 6 who desires all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth for there is one god and one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus how, how does your new world translation read with regard to verse sure. 5 um do you want me to read M may i just because there's yeah. broke there's sentence starting read from verse 3 yeah, okay sure. sure thank you this is fine and acceptable in the sight of our Saviour, God, whose will is that all sorts of people should be saved and come to an accurate knowledge of truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, a man, Christ Jesus, now I'm into verse 6 now, who gave himself a corresponding ransom for all. This is what is to be witnessed in his own due time. So I, I've, got a, I've got a reply um, because... For, for us, we're talking about God, Jehovah, in verse 3 and 4 and 5. Then we reference towards the back end of 5, Jesus. Um, I don't, if I can ask a question, just to collect get some clarity in my own mind. Mm -hmm. do, do you follow um, the, the belief of the Trinity oh, of course. at all? Yeah, 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 that, right. that was my so background. That's, that's the difference, pen, pen, so pen, that's the big Big ba Baptist, right, then, Baptist, Baptist churches would be nominally Trinitarian. One of the reasons right. why I left was actually because of the Trinity, because most church leaders in my area, um, Pentecostal and Baptist, although they would say they're Trinitarian, they don't have a clue yeah. what it is and they just don't care. And so yeah, they would sure. say they're Trinitarian, but in reality, they're not Trinitarian. Right. And so, so the so Trinity us, was one of the... Th the Trinity was one of the reasons why I actually left. Um, all I'm saying is, yes, the context is is God or Jehovah, but it yeah. mentions the man Christ Jesus Correct. in verse 5. So Christ resurrected, you see, as a man, because this verse, 1 Timothy 2.5, is written 30 years after the resurrection. And Paul's not saying, no. oh, he used to be the man Christ Jesus. Yeah. He is taking the verbs from verse 4 the man Christ Jesus. Now Paul does yeah. then go back and talk about Christ's death on the tree in verse 6, which is a past tense, but verse yeah. 5 takes the tenses, the Greek uh, verbal tenses from verse 4 and mm. I've looked at this and Lenski and Robertson say that they are present tense and Lenski mm. and Robertson are probably the two greatest Greek Americans of the 20th century. I don't speak Greek, I'm not that mm. clever, um, but I do try to learn from people who are a lot cleverer than me, because that's how I learn. Yeah. Well, I mean, in, in, in ours, five and six are very much linked because there's a comma at the end of our verse five. So I would say that the reference, a man Christ Jesus who gave, mm -hmm. is all in one, is, is talking about the past. Mm -hmm. I don't see any present there um, because of the link between verse five and six, certainly in our Bibles. Mm -hmm. But there is one God, okay, we believe that's Jehovah, the Father, and one mediator, and now we're introducing Jesus. Yes, uh, present between tense. Between God and men, Yes, a, a man, Christ Jesus, who yes. gave himself. So there's no break there. To me, Paul is, is referencing Jesus, a man, Jesus, who gave. Mm. And that word gave is pretty, well, it's clear to me, um, it's critical 
that we're talking about, then he's he's in that same sentence referencing uh, what Jesus did in the past. Absolutely. Gave would be a, a past tense, and it's talking about Christ's death on the tree. That's um, obviously what you're saying about the, the commas, uh, a very valid point, because, of course, there were no full stops or commas in the original Greek. That's put in by the English trans translators. So you're making a very valid point. But there are so many verses, you see, that talk about Christ yeah. post-resurrection as a man. So, right. you know, for, for you to say that... Do you, have a, do you have another one at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm um, trying to pin you, pin you here. Yes, I'm very interested, yeah. I'll be honest. Yeah, um, okay, Acts seventeen thirty one. I've I've been at this for hours. I've been looking sure. at this for many, many hours. Um Do you want to read it? Um Acts seventeen thirty one. Yep. Um I'll read it from are you happy for me to read it from the New World Translation? I don't mind where you read it from, as long as you tell okay. me where you're reading it from so everything is referenced. Sure. Otherwise, okay, I'm because I'm I've got a pen here and I'm scribbling notes as we go along. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Understood. So, so this version says, because he has set a day on which he purposes to judge the inhabited earth in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and he has provided a guarantee to all men by resurrecting him from the dead. Okay. So Acts thirteen. 1731 says more or less the same in my version i'm reading from the new king james because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man all right notice uh -huh. man yeah, he whom he has ordained that, yeah. that's obviously future tense that's talking about the future judgment which hasn't happened yet uh -huh, we're uh -huh. living two thousand years after the book of acts and it still hasn't happened yet but when it does happen the judgment will be by a man whom he the Father has ordained. Now, the man there is obviously Jesus Christ, but he's not referred to oh. as a spirit creature. He's a man. Correct. Yeah, I can see that. Um, can it's see that. not the word anthropos. It's a different Greek word, but it means a male, a male human being, or a male, or a male, um, um, a male creature. Um, the second part of the verse is very interesting. He has, um, by the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead now raising him from the dead has only one possible antecedent in the sense in the sentence according to again i've looked at lensky and robertson the antecedent for raising him from the dead is man so it's yeah. saying very clearly that christ rose from the dead as a man and this man will still be a man two thousand years after paul wrote this i don't know when the um, second coming and the judgment will happen and I'm not going to give any dates but um, uh, you, you know let's say it happens in another 20 or 30 years time well round about you know whenever the second coming happens the judgment will happen then but Christ is going to judge as a man not as a spirit creature where do you think Jesus is right now oh heaven Okay, and in what form? Just out of interest. Um, he rose up to heaven in his physical body. Um, right. Acts chapter one, verses nine to eleven, talks about the resurrection, or the yes. sorry, the sorry, the ascension into heaven. Yes. Did he become spirit in your mind at any point, or is he still a man? Uh, Christ has always been spirit. Um, right. When it says in John one one that the Word was with God, he's not with God right. eternally as a man. Okay, he yeah. is the same spirit as the Father and the Holy Spirit. Yes. I would yes. distinguish the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit yes. in persons, but they all yes. share the same nature with his, which is spirit. So, so Christ is a spirit, yes. and Christ yes. has eternally been a spirit, and Christ yes. is a spirit now. But for the last 2,000 years, Christ added a human, human nature which rather confusingly is not just a human body, it's also a human spirit or soul, right. to his divine nature, so that Christ now has, as far as I would understand, Mark, he has two natures, he would be fully God and fully man, or, or I think the, the creed state perfect God and perfect man, perhaps that's a better way of putting it. Right. Yeah, that's interesting. So our understanding is that Jesus ascended to heaven and, and his physical body, which could not have survived um would have would have would have 
disappeared and he would have ascended to heaven as a spirit creature to, to be back with his father in a spirit realm in a spirit form which i couldn't even begin to describe what that would look, <laughs> what <it> look like <laughs> um i wouldn't even pretend to but um it's interesting what you're saying about that uh, i think it's I've gone, I've gone back to acts one now because i just wanted to be familiar with something mm-hmm. acts 1731 wasn't it it's, it's acts um, 1731 it's the word back. man which is yeah. used in two senses. Firstly, a man will judge the world. I mean, the, the, the future judgment, there's actually two. There's actually the judgment of believers. And then in Revelation 20, it talks about the white throne judgment, I think, for the, for the unbelievers. Um, the first judgment is a, um, a judgment of believers' works, because all believers yeah. will be found not guilty. But the second judgment is for the unbelievers, who will be found guilty. Yeah, Doesn't it say that the Father, or God, is going to appoint a man to do that judgment, not a spirit creature. Christ is going to be as a man when he does that judgment. Yes. Do you think it could possibly be with the viewpoint of the writer at the time of the Book of Acts? Because Jesus would have been on earth at that. He would have, you know, looking at, you know, retrospectively, if I just remind myself... Uh, where are well, we? this isn't retrospective. This is looking forward. It's using... Because he has appointed a day on which he will... Now, he will is future tense. On which he will judge... The, and in my Bible, he will is not in italics. Uh, so uh, I, I do have an interlinear here. I can check to see... Um, the trouble is I have very limited, I can identify letters and words, but I don't decline Greek verbs. I, I did try, I did do a course in Biblical Greek, and I lasted about yeah. 11 weeks. And I had to host up the white flag. I simply wasn't clever enough to do it. I am dyslexic. I was left-handed as a child. Well, and I, I can was tell made... from the way you're speaking that you're an ex- you are certainly an educated man. And I was... man. You may not have lasted, but I... Yeah, you've obviously got an ability to study and study well. Well, I I didn't go as far enough in Wenham's Greek to do right. the... Um, it was when I was at university to do the two-credit course in Biblical <laughs> Greek, so I, I didn't actually go that far. Uh, but uh, I, the sad thing about me is what my life might have been if my lefty teachers in the 1960 at primary school hadn't wow. made me right with my right hand because it made me stutter very very badly oh, right. and it held me back academically for many years i still can't spell today i simply cannot spell at all my spelling is the level of a 12 or 13 year old however got really? a degree wow. yeah um well we've got acts it was written by luke it was completed around 61 ce but it was written from the time jesus died um so probably chapter 17 would have been written after he'd actually left anyway. So right. um, he wouldn't have come, he wouldn't have written that as if he was <laughs> in the same room as Jesus in front of him. So that that, that uh, doesn't really help me. Right. Um, um, <laughs> I, I would have to do a word study because the word is not, the, the word is he is about to. He is about, mm. which might yes. not be a verb. Okay. It's 3,195 in Strong's Concordance. I'm looking at an interlinear. Hmm. Mulemi. Mulemi. Um, so, but um, he will is certainly future tense uh, because yeah. he has appointed a day on which he will, future tense, judge the world in oh. righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. Um, you know, it, it seems to be fairly clear, Paul is saying, with Luke writing this, that God is going to judge the world by a man. Uh, At least that's the way I see it. If there's some sort of convoluted, well, he doesn't actually mean that he used to be a man, but now is a spirit creature. That that kind of making it very convoluted and very confusing. And it, it also very, very clear in, in, in Acts 17.31, that Christ rose from the dead as a man. He has given assurance of this, so we give back to the present tense, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And the antecedent for raising him from the dead, him, the antecedent for that, it has to be man. It, it's it's not he. Do, 
which is God the Father, because God the Father never died and rose from the dead. Him can only refer back to the man, which is Christ. So it's saying that Christ rose from the dead as a man. Well, it could be just even far, far more simple than that. And the reason I say that is because we need to think of who the Bible was written for, and it actually talks about the apostles gathering those unlettered and ordinary. Um, and maybe, just maybe, it, you, we're looking into this far too deeply. Using the word man just help people recognize that, yes, this, we are talking about the Son of God who took the form, quote-unquote, of a man, just so you all know, um, he wasn't an angel, just another spirit creature. We're, we're differentiating that, that the spirit son, Jesus, came to earth. He was born. He became, quote unquote, flesh and blood, the man. And maybe, maybe begin to wrap up in the, 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 the physics of it. And actually, the point that we're really trying to yeah. highlight, mm -hmm. Jesus was always trying to highlight, is the judgment, it is the righteousness, is the appointment, is the guarantee is the resurrection. Um, I don't, I mean, please forgive me if you think I'm insulting anything you're saying. No, 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 no. I never no, wish no. to do that, but we keep things very, very simple. The, the truth, the Bible, everything about the publications, we don't use great, wordy Latin, Greek, that's what the first, first that's what the, <laughs> the, the, the false religion tried to do. They kept the Bible in Latin for as many centuries as they possibly could and kept the, the core message of the Bible away from the common man. That's in part why our Bible is remove words like the and thou and things like that. We try to make it understandable whilst not whilst not losing the core message. Um, does any of that, that, that sort of yeah. make sense that we could be getting wrapped up in, in the physics, physics well, of it? I mean, I know it's you, it's got a bigger picture because if we are talking a mm. man, then we're not, then that throws out chapter 33, what we started reading. Um, um, but, well, what did Jesus him didn't Jesus himself in John two say say that he was going to raise up his physical body? He was going to resurrect from the dead in the body that he was going to die in. John two, yeah, um, nineteen to twenty two. John chapter two, verse nineteen to twenty two. Um, soma in Greek is the word body when it applies to a human being. Um, I did do a bit of research reading Robert Gundry's book on the word Soma, and he went through the whole of the New Testament to show that when Soma applies to physical body, sorry, to a human being, it always means a physical body. It never means a body made out of spirit. Um, so John 2.19, Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. So now the Jews misunderstand him in verse 20. Then the Jews said, it has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you will raise it up in three days. Now, here's the key verse. I don't know how your Bible reads. Verse 21. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Body is soma. Correct. Yes, we have the words talking instead of speaking. But other than that, everything else is as you said. Um, verse 22. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them and they yeah. believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. So it's talking about the yeah. resurrection from the dead in verse 22. And when Jesus said, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. He's talking uh -huh. about the temple of his body. Verse 21. He's going to raise up his physical body. That's uh -huh. what Jesus is prophesying here. And that's what I believe happened. I believe Jesus rose in the same physical body that he died in. So our reference on that, verse 21, is that the comment by Apostle John, who was a writer, Jesus was using figurative speech comparing his anticipated death and resurrection to the demolition and reconstruction of a building. You know, I'm sure he, everything he said was in uh, illustrations. Without an illustration, he would not speak. I think the scriptures tell us, don't they? Mm -hmm. So to help them grasp the message, I don't see... Anything about, yes, I see in verse 22, when though he was raised up from the dead, I don't see anything there that comes out to me in his physical body. His, his, his flesh would have obviously started to decompose, no doubt, um, quite quickly. Um, but there's nothing there. It just talks about, again, the raising from the dead and the, them believing the scriptures. And I'm trying not to paraphrase, but I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, what sure. I'm doing by that is I'm picking main points and I'm not yeah, yeah. seeing anything that talks about a physical. Uh, uh, body raising 
Well, he speaks about raising. He speaks about I will raise up John two nineteen, as you said there. But it, again, there's no, there's, there's nothing to say it was spirit. To be fair, but there's nothing to say that it wasn't either. Well, the word body is soma in Greek. It's used in verse 21, but he was speaking of the temple of his body. Body there is soma. Yes. And Robert Gundry's okay. study shows that soma in the New Testament, every time it's used and applied to a human being, it means physical body. It never oh. means a body made out of spirit. Um, you don't find soma applied to angels. Um, it is applied to the stars and planets in 1 Corinthians 15, round about verse 40, I think, 38 or 40. But of course, they're uh -huh. not human beings. When soma, body, is applied to a human being, it means a physical body. And Jesus' words in verse 19, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it, it up. Could Surely I that's reference prophetic. another scripture to you? Pardon? Is that all right? Could I reference a scripture? Yeah, yeah, sure, please. Along this point? Yeah, please. So, um... We, we looked at verse 21 and, and we said that he was resurrected by his father Jehovah God in, in another body, not one made with hands like the temple of Jerusalem, but a spirit body made um, by, built by his father. Um, if I could just get you to look at First Peter, if you've got it there, chapter 3. Yeah. Be interesting to see what your version says there, verse 18. Particularly the last part For of the last sentence. So so, sorry, thing, sorry, Mark. I don't like taking things out of context. Yeah, verse sure. Peter 3, verse 18. Yes, yeah, so, sorry, Mark, interrupted you. Okay. Um, if you want to yeah. read all of the verse, yes. rather than taking bits and pieces out of context, I'm not a fan of that. Um, what yes. does yours say? For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. So he died yeah. in his flesh... But he's made alive by the Spirit, meaning by the Holy Spirit. Now, in John two nineteen that we've just read, Jesus says he's going to raise himself from the dead, um, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Here, he's raised up by the Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. uh, and elsewhere, and I cannot remember for the life of me the other scriptures, but there's other scriptures that talk about God the Father raising him from the dead. Most Bibles that I've looked at, because I think it's a dative here, where you're addressing somebody in the Greek like a sort of speech. If, I, if I'm preaching to you, that's the dative. Um, most Bibles read, uh, put to death in the flesh, made alive in spirit that's how a lot of bibles read it's it never says in any bible or in the original greek that he's made alive as a spirit oh. so it's, it's a contrast between the flesh and the spirit put to death in the flesh made alive by the spirit or it's it's in spirit that he's he's made alive yeah let me just double check something I may well need, because we certainly don't profess to have every single answer. I'm not certainly a walking Bible scholar or an encyclopedia, but on that point, I'd be very interested if you'd allow me to do a little bit more research. Sure, and, sure. And yeah, yeah, sure. You. I may not be able to give you the answers you're looking sure, for or even sure. you know, change your opinion, but thank you for that. Yes, um, sure, sure, I'm sure. At one now that sure. jumps out. Um, uh, going, going back to your book, page 137, yeah. Um, the other thing about this 144,000, I'll just read the first three lines again. After the yeah. wicked are destroyed, Jesus will rule as king for a thousand years. During that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Now, if these co-rulers help people to become sinless and thereby perfect, uh -huh. I would have a problem with that. Okay. Um, I've no problem that Jesus can forgive sins because Jesus said right. that in Mark two ten that that mm -hmm. but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. When I memorize the Bible, I tend to memorize the King James. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um, so I've no problem Mark two ten that Jesus can make people sinless by forgiving them of their mm -hmm. sins, but mm -hmm. I would have problem with this statement in line lines two and three that he, that's Jesus, and his 144,000 co-rulers, 
and the context du is during the thousand years the millennium oh. which i might not quite see that the same way that you do i'd see it is in heaven oh. not on earth but that's a separate issue. Will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. I can't see any angel or human being other than Jesus, of course, helping in any okay. way to make other human beings sinless. Because to me, yes. only Jesus makes people sinless or to be more yes. technically perfect. Jesus in covenant with the Father and that covenant is mediated to us by the Holy Spirit. That the 144,000, if they are raised as non-human spirit creatures, how on earth can they make people sinless? Okay, so we, 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 I mean, if you think one of the premise of what we believe, that the 144,000, when they are raised, are, for argument's sake of what I'm saying, in spirit form as well, um, they are in, in uh, heaven with Jesus, in, within his kingdom. Um, which was promised to him. In fact, um, we go right back to Genesis, to the original Garden of Eden, when Satan decided to uh, uh, ruffle feathers, so to speak, as a bit of a disrespectful way of saying it, but caused problems for for uh, God's purpose in introduction, introducing an independent spirit by taking advantage, of course, free will, which we all have, into, into Eve. Mm -hmm. Um we, just to move sideways very, very slightly, and I don't want to go off, off track, but we, we believe we are in this situation because God has allowed time to be proven that we don't, can't rule things for ourselves. We do have issues in that regard. We do need laws and to be governed by God, um, but we all have free will. And that was obviously taken taken advantage of. We've, in our estimation, proven that we can't look after ourselves, and that any human government that's formed certainly doesn't ever have the answers, um, which leads us right up to what we believe we're living in the last days. Um, where, as Paul said, critical times hard to deal with will be here, and he listed a whole long list of things that would signify the conditions, as well as the things that Jesus, the apostles, asked him to see what would be the presence of his. Um, Etc. Et so we we have we have this this scenario where um, God promised to put things right. Um, we recognise that the majority of the Greek scriptures, aka everything from Mark onwards, uh, Matthew onwards, sorry, yeah. was was written when obviously Jesus came to earth, it started with, with the Gospels, and takes us right up, including many, many unfulfilled prophecies to the book of Revelation, uttered by the Apostle John when in prison. It tells us there, and really is speaking in the main, to Christ's brothers. Um, Jesus speaks about preparing a, a place for them. Um, the anointed, as we deem 144,000, would mostly have been from the first century Christian congregations, but we can't say for sure how many, however many, because as you referenced, Fred Franz and Rutherford, Russell is just a few, are still being um, uh, classed as performing the anointed today, which our governing body, um, which I'm assuming you are aware of that phrase. Have you well, heard of that I before, the governing body? I, yes, I don't think that Pastor Russell would be deemed one of the anointed because he died before 1919, I think. Well, we um, believe we believe that um, that uh, Jesus Christ came in, in, to in, on his throne in 1914. That's what we believe. I think Pastor Russell came in and said, um, "Gentile times have begun." But the governing double check that. yes, but the appointment of the governing body is in 1919. Yes, but I'm, I'm talking, yes, okay, I'm talking. Uh, um, um, but the, the, the key thing is, during that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers, mm -hmm. all right, during that time is the millennium, the thousand years. Yep. Whether it's yep. on earth or whether it's in heaven, I think you see it is it, it, it on earth, and most American evangelicals who are dispensationalists would see it on earth. You have similar views, but not identical. I would yes. see it 
as spiritual because it's, it's based in heaven. Yeah. Um, during that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth yeah. to become perfect and sinless. Now, I don't yeah. believe, perhaps I didn't explain myself very well, Mark, so forgive me. I don't believe that anyone other than Jesus can make people sinless because Jesus yeah. said, Mark 2.10, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sin. So it's Jesus who yeah. makes us sinless not other human beings okay. and this booklet seems to imply that jesus is working with his 144,000 uh -huh. co-rulers to make people uh -huh. sinless now if this is talking about giving bible studies and giving book studies so people read the bible who resurrected during the millennium and they they come to faith in christ because they're given books and they're given book studies uh -huh. and they're given bibles um that would be a plausible explanation but it would have to uh -huh. mention the great crowd if the text said uh -huh. during that time he jesus and the great crowd and the 144,000 co-rulers uh -huh. in heaven will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless by offering them bible studies and books and giving them uh -huh. bible literature that wouldn't be i wouldn't have much of a problem with that okay. but it ignores the great crowd because uh -huh. this isn't talking about book studies it's actually uh -huh. saying the 144,000 co-rulers in heaven work with jesus to make people sinless and i believe only jesus makes people sinless not right people like judge rutherford and fred franz who, who would now be in spirit bodies yeah in heaven well you've got you've got scriptures such as john 14 uh, i think one one two and three which maybe maybe two, which talks about Jesus, where he said, I, I've told you, for I'm going my way to prepare a place for you. So he's talking to his, those that would form um, the anointed, those that would make up the kingdom, which takes us right back to the book of Daniel, um, where Daniel had those visions, yeah. and he saw the kingdom that would not be brought to ruin. And we put an end to all other kingdoms. So it's not just Jesus up there on his own. He specifically um, talks about and brings us back to 144,000 in Revelation, a set number that would be co rulers. Luke 12, um, 32. Have no fear, little flock, your father. Sorry, what are, you, what, are you, what, are you, what are you reading now? Luke chapter 12. Is about oh, the Luke. Sorry, Luke. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Luke yeah, chapter John, 12, yeah, sorry, sure. John 14, and now I'm in Luke 12, 32. Um, yep, sorry, someone was trying says, to phone me. Luke 12, yeah, okay. verse... 32. 32. Fear not, little flock, I'm reading it from your Bible, I believe, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom that's not what i'm talking about it's got nothing i'm not talking about the kingdom that's a separate I'm, issue i'm trying to I, well i know what you're saying i'm trying to just say that the the 144,000 have given have been given a special place they're not angels they're part of god's kingdom they're part of jesus kingdom where they are the ones that will that will uh look after matters they're not equal to jesus that could that would be highly blasphemous to say that but they have been given a special place alongside him the bride of christ uh you may you may refer to them as that work with jesus that work to to restore balance and from their perfect um place in the spirit realm with with jesus by their side or with should i say them by jesus side um have that ability or give them that 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 um responsibility to help him remove sin from the earth so they actually do work with jesus to make the resurrected ones on the earth the ones resurrected to the earth they do work with jesus to make those resurrected ones sinless yeah i can't accept that i, I i'm sorry mark i cannot accept that what? other human beings have any part whatsoever in removing yeah. sins from other people i um made a profession of faith in 1985 in a, in okay. an assemblies of god church peniel chapel in west london quite near to kensington uh -huh. temple 
but I was brought up as a Catholic. I was an altar boy for a year or two uh-huh. when I was at Buckfast Abbey School at Buckfast Abbey. Uh-huh. Now, in the Catholic system, they say Jesus forgives your sins, but Jesus uh-huh. has priests who help him. Yes? Um, uh-huh. Jesus has... Someone's just texting me, sorry. Jesus has priests who help him to forgive sins through seven sacraments now i vehemently believe that jesus does have the ability to forgive my sins and to forgive other people's sins mark 2 10 jesus says he has the ability to forgive sins i do not believe that any man any human being any angel has any ability to forgive my sins or anybody else's sins that's similar to the catholic system which says that Jesus gives grace to the Pope, the grace gives the the Pope gives this grace to a bishop, which is why the bishop has a ring, which all Catholic cl- clergy have to go on their knees and kiss once a year, and yeah. then the bishop consecrates priests, and through the seven sacraments of the Catholic Church, like the confessional, like the mass, uh-huh. like extreme unction, which is the last rites, uh-huh. through these sacraments, the priest has the ability to forgive sins. I vehemently disagree with the claim that any man here on earth can forgive me of my sins. Now, many evangelicals will say amen to that, but then they treat their pastor, especially if he flies around the world on a private jet like Benny Hinn or Creflo Dollar or Kenneth Copeland, they treat their pastor exactly like the medieval Catholics treat the priest. They think that somehow um the their 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 pastor benny hinn or kenneth copeland comes between them and jesus and the only the only way to jesus is through benny hinn or through kenneth copeland or through somebody else they see on christian tv no human being mark no angel no spirit creature can forgive us of our sins only jesus in covenant with the father and through the mediating work of the holy spirit can forgive us of our sins but i do not believe I mean, I would disagree with, I don't want to go into who are the 144,000, because I think 144,000 are the great crowd, but maybe that's for another time. But I don't believe whoever this 144,000 co-rulers are, they do not make people sinless. They do not help Jesus to make people sinless. Only Jesus alone makes people sinless. That's something that Jesus does. The, the, The priesthood of christian believers uh in one peter i think it's one peter 2 9 is one of praise not one of forgiving people's sins like catholic priests uh one uh-huh. peter chapter 2 verse 9 i feel very strongly on this because i was brought up a catholic yeah, no, I, I, I was brought yeah, up yeah, a yeah. nominal catholic i was never a passionate catholic and my my family my, my father was an anglican my mother was a um spanish catholic so that's uh-huh. why I had to be brought up a, a Catholic under the marriage contract. But it was all very, very nominal. 1 Peter 2 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So that's our priesthood. We are a, uh-huh. a kings, we are priests, but we proclaim the praises of Christ to other people. We do not go around forgiving other peoples of their sins, and nor do we work. Because the Catholics will say the priest doesn't forgive you of your sins. The Catholics will say Jesus forgives you of your sins. But Jesus gives the Pope authority, the Pope gives the bishop authority, and the bishop gives the priest authority. So the priest is an autochristos, which is Latin. He helps Jesus to forgive people of their sins through the seven sacraments. And, and to me, that's utterly wrong. And I, I cannot accept, Mark, that the 144,000 co-rulers can help to make people sinless, which which you did say they, they do. And I, I can't accept that, mate. Sorry. Yeah, well, look, I appreciate that. Um, and I, if I can find some other scriptural references or some other information that might back that up, um, perhaps you'd yeah. allow me to do oh, that. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, sure. Um, great, thank you. Appreciate that. It's, it's, I mean, you mentioned the Pope there. I'm assuming you're saying that, not in a derogatory sense, but in, in disagreement with his position, because we, I don't acknowledge, we don't acknowledge the Pope and his position as God's representative on, on earth, uh, sadly, in any way, shape or form. 
Um, um, well, I don't believe anyone on earth represents God other uh, than yes. if a person is um, a Christian, we um, have a priesthood, um, yes. we have a kingship that is still future, but we have a priesthood. 1 Peter 2 9, we proclaim the praises of him. We proclaim the praises of Jehovah God and Jesus Christ. Um, but I, I do not believe that anyone on earth, whether it's the Pope or the Mormon bishop or the Jehovah's Witness governing body or Pentecostal yeah. preachers who fly around the world in private jets, I don't believe anyone yeah. has the power on earth to forgive other people of their sins. I don't believe Benny Hinn or Kenneth Copeland or famous TV preachers can do that. I don't believe the yeah. Mormon prophet in Utah can do that. I don't believe the no, governing totally body can agree. do that. I, I don't totally believe the Pope can do that. But we're not saying it from that perspective. It's not like one day you're talking to Mark Perring and then the next minute he feels he's one of the hundred forty four thousand he goes to work and he forgives you. It's not it's not like it's not like that. Um, we are we are talking about a covenant that God made to pull imperfect humans from the earth at various stages throughout the history of mankind. And based upon the way they lived their lives and the faith that they showed, having their assignment completely and utterly changed, not from one of a human standpoint, but one of a, uh, a position. I mean, 144,000 people compared to the amount of lived throughout the dawn of mankind is a very, very small number. Uh, but that was what was, was covenanted, and that was what Jesus spoke about preparing a way for them. We mm -hmm. have the kingdom mm -hmm. uh, that was spoken about in Daniel that would crush all other kingdoms. We have Revelation, which talks about a set number. But we're not talking... I think we need to get away from, you know, Bill down the road or uh, well, whatever. A, a, just a person, just a human with imperfect, flawed reasoning. Their roles when they get to heaven completely and utterly change. They are co-rulers of the kingdom. So they're not the, the, the only begotten son of, of God, the firstborn of all creation, but they have a position of great responsibility and magnitude, and it changes. They happen to perhaps, we, we, we reference it in some of our publications, um, it's nice to know that they may have some characteristics or certainly appreciate what it's like to be a human and to be discouraged and to suffer and have trials and anxieties. But we can't really determine what kind of personality they'll have, only that one would imagine that they would have some recollection or memory of the pre of the life that they had as a human, but that their responsibility now is just outweighed a million to one with, with just you, me, and our okay. fleshly neighbours in our streets. Okay. Well, well, look, thank you very much, Mark, for speaking to me. I can speak again, but you always need to book an appointment with me because I'm here, okay. there and everywhere. I'm very, very busy. Um, so as long as you text me a time, an exact time, okay. um, I can always say no if it's not convenient or let you know yeah. by text if I have to cancel. I will have Zoom in about a month's time so we can speak on Zoom yeah. in a month's time. Another chapter is chapter seven on the Holy Spirit. As a Trinitarian, I see the Holy Spirit as personal. So I've read Holy Spirit, God's Active Force, which is chapter 7.4 on page 30. So maybe that's something for another time, unless there's something else you'd sure. like to look at, of course. If you want to look at no, something I'm else... I'm more than happy to listen to you um, and in terms of what you'd like to discuss. I don't believe it's appropriate for me to tell you what you need to know. Uh, I'd love to let you guide the conversation in terms of the themes that we discuss. Yes. Can, before we go, yes, sure. would you mind if I asked you a, a, a question? Yes, sure. Sort of sure. yes or no, because I'm yes. a busy man. Um, do you believe that when we die, everyone... Do you believe in a restored Earth long-term and men and women living on Earth forever? Or do you think that... I'm just interested to know if you think... That, that, that this this planet that we live on will be restored to balance and paradise and that, that those that are fortunate enough will be living on Earth forever or whether this planet is not to be taken into consideration long term. Yes, I believe people will be restored to this earth because Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says they shall reign upon the earth. The Greek preposition there is epi, it is upon. Mm. So, Excellent. That's, that's okay. good to know. Appreciate okay. that. Um, so, um, I'll do some research. 
and maybe drop you a text and then you let me know when it's convenient. Um, um, and it's we'll best to it's best to just suggest an exact time. That's that's the clearest thing to do. I won't talk by text. I, I'm not interested in links and I won't dialogue by text. I'm sorry, I refuse. No, no, no. I've I, been I think down that route before do. with a seven, seven day Adventist who just spammed me with endless text <laughs> and I, I'm not even going to read it. Um, I'm happy to talk. Um, there's various parts of the book I found quite interesting, but I would see the Holy Spirit as personal rather than personal. So if you want to discuss that. Okay. Um, just okay. suggest a time to me that's convenient to you, and I can always text back if it's if it's not for me. Yeah, I won't get into long-winded narratives. I'll just message you saying, yeah, sure. how does yeah. Sunday at whatever time work yeah. for you, Robert? And we can say yes or no. Okay, Mark. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Thank you for your time, Robert. Have a good day. Same to you. Bye-bye.